This is CTV News. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adrian South. A horrifying scene in South London today as police and firefighters tried to stop a distressed man from setting himself on fire. We warn you that the video you are about to see is disturbing. At 1.30 outside the Canada Citizenship and Immigration Office on Exeter Road, a man doused himself with gasoline and set himself ablaze. Firefighters can be seen extinguishing the flames. The 49-year-old man was rushed to hospital and is in serious condition. A London police officer is now guarding the area. Because the man was injured during his interaction with police, the Special Investigations Unit has been called in. The SIU has invoked its mandate and London police will not be releasing any more information. Witnesses tell CTV News the man was alert and standing when he was taken to hospital. Good evening, I'm Adrian South. Thanks for joining us. We now know the names of the three people who died in a car crash near Listable last night. 60-year-old Walter Yetman, 58-year-old Donna Yetman and 28-year-old Stephanie Rollison, all of London, were in the same SUV when it collided with a transport truck. A two-year-old boy also in the vehicle remains in London Hospital tonight with non-life-threatening injuries. CTV's Jeff Pickle is just back from the site of the crash and brings us the latest. A major crash has taken lives tonight in Perth County. Three people have been killed and a child has been transported to hospital after a crash west of Palmerston. OPP report the collision between a minivan and transport on Perth Line 88 and Perth Road 178. Orange Ambulance transferred the patient from Listowel Memorial Hospital to London's Victoria Hospital at about 8.30 tonight. The area is known as the hamlet of Mains Corners. The road has been closed and investigators remain on the scene. One man is in critical condition after a shooting in London's Old East Village Thursday night. With more, here's CTV's Sean Irvin. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Adrian South. We begin tonight with a rocky end to a family vacation. A London couple is now speaking out after they were left stranded in Jamaica. CTV's Merrick Sutherland explains how a fun-filled birthday trip for a six-year-old turned into a frantic and stressful return to Canada. Thousands of university students are moving back to London this weekend, but this school year comes with new consequences aimed at ending next month's fake homecoming party on Bruffdale Avenue. CTV's Daryl Newcomb visited students and their parents moving into houses on the infamous street to ask if any of City Hall or Western University's actions will curb the notorious party. Elgin OPP are asking for the public's assistance in locating 38-year-old Christopher George of Central Elgin. He was last seen in St. Thomas on Wednesday. Police say he is considered dangerous and they have a warrant for his arrest. George is described as an Indigenous male. He is 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing 315 pounds. It's the final long weekend of summer. That means many of us will hit the roads or hit the waterways over the next few days. And as CTV's Brian Bicknell tells us, OPP plan to be out there as well. Some local MPPs got new roles today when the Provincial New Democrats reorganized their ranks to better take on the ruling Progressive Conservatives at Queen's Park. The NDP has created several new critic portfolios. Those portfolios include ethics, tenants' rights and manufacturing. The move is intended to address emerging issues following year one of the Ford government. Locally, Terence Kernahan is the critic for LGBTQ issues. Peggy Sattler is deputy house leader and takes on the ethics portfolio. And London Fanshawe MPP Teresa Armstrong becomes the party's chief whip. The latest news out of Chatham-Kent's Erie Shore Drive is that at least a dozen properties have sustained significant structural damage. This is due to high lake levels and relentless winds battering the Lake Erie shoreline. As CTV's Chris Campbell reports, the state of emergency remains in effect. Good evening, I'm Adrian South. Gun violence in the U.S. took an ugly turn this weekend with two mass shootings in less than 24 hours. At least 29 people were killed and dozens injured in separate tragedies in Ohio and Texas. Police now say one is being considered a hate crime. With the latest, here's CTV's Richard Madden. With Hurricane Dorian brewing in the Atlantic, people in Florida are preparing for the worst and packing their bags for a trip to safety. Hattis Brown has the details. Local dairy processors have been given a funding boost from the federal government.
More than $2 million has been given to two operations in St. Mary's. Stonetown Artisan Cheese has been given almost $150,000 to help them with purchasing, the cutting, processing and storage of their cheese. Officials say it will help them broaden the product offerings. And the Saputo operation in St. Mary's will be getting more than $1.9 million to expand their production area and add new cold storage capacity. Both investments should also mean more jobs for the area. The funding comes from the Ministry of Agriculture and Agri-Food. The U.S. and Iran traded new threats today as world leaders urged restraint, fearing the escalating crisis could lead to a military confrontation. Today, Donald Trump announced more economic sanctions and said airstrikes are still on the table. This comes after Iran shot down a U.S. military drone this week. With more, here's CTV's Janet Dirks. Conservative MP Deepak Obrai has died after a brief battle with liver cancer diagnosed only weeks ago. Obrai represented the riding of Calgary Forest Lawn since 1997. He was also the dean of the Federal Conservative Caucus and the first Hindu politician ever elected to the House of Commons. Obrai died overnight peacefully and surrounded by his family. He was 69 years old. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau commented on his passing, writing, Our parliamentary family is mourning a great colleague and friend today. O'Brien dedicated himself to serving his constituents with utmost integrity, and we will miss him dearly. I send my deepest condolences to his wife Nina, his children, grandkids, and loved ones. And Conservative leader Andrew Scheer also sent condolences to O'Brien's family, writing in part, Deepak was a constant source of joy inside the Conservative caucus. He brightened every room he walked into and often injected warmth, kindness and good humour into our deliberations. I know I speak on behalf of my Conservative colleagues when I say that he will be missed tremendously. Fire crews in the Forest City responded to a late morning kitchen fire in the city's southwest corner. Fire crews were called to a townhouse at 911 Wonderland Road South shortly after 10 a.m. A pot on the stove caught fire and quickly sent black smoke through the unit and into neighboring homes. The residents made it out safely and no one was injured. Four cats were inside at the time. Three were located, but one was unaccounted for by officials. There's no word yet on the cost of damages. Ontario Provincial Police are cracking down on boating violations this holiday weekend. With more, here's CTV's Mike Arcelides. Today is International Overdose Awareness Day across the world and more than 100 communities in Ontario held events to recognize the current opioid crisis. This was the scene in Norfolk County as Delhi hosted the area's first ever awareness event. The balloons and shoes represent nearly 500 lives that have been lost to opioid overdoses in the region. The day aims to help tackle the stigma tied to drug-related death. CTV's Ricardo Meneza attended the event in Windsor where those touched by overdose came together to remember their loved ones and call for action. One person is dead after an early morning crash in Windsor and a police investigation is now underway. This was the scene today outside the main entrance of the Canadian College of Health, Science and Technology. Emergency crews were called to a two-vehicle crash in the 1700 block of Walker Road just before 2 a.m. where they found a blue vehicle flipped. Police say the driver of one of the vehicles was a man in his 40s. The driver of that vehicle had to be extricated and he was later pronounced dead. The driver of the other vehicle, a woman in her 20s, was transferred to hospital but did not suffer any injuries. Walker Road between Mohawk and Seneca was blocked off to drivers as the traffic reconstruction team investigated the scene. The road has since reopened. Police are now trying to determine if alcohol, drugs, speed or a medical condition played a role in the man's death. No charges have been laid at this time. This death comes less than 30 hours after a motorcycle and vehicle collided on County Road 10 in Amherstburg. One woman lost her life. Today, Windsor Police and Fire are calling on the public to pay attention on the roads in hopes of preventing fatal collisions like this. CTV's Alana Hadadian has the details. London's famous black cabs are now part of an eco-revolution. As of this weekend, 2,500 electric taxis have rolled off the assembly line. It's part of a plug-in plan to put the brakes on diesel in a capital exhausted with emissions. CTV's London Bureau Chief Paul Workman shows us the road to cleaner air. For Canadian astronaut David St. Jacques, the last six months have literally been out of this world. But now he's gearing up for his return to Earth on Monday.
the day I go back to Earth, uh, I will have to pinch myself. I think it will all feel like a dream. St. Jacques says the return to gravity will be physically taxing on his body, but he's excited to see his family again. This was his first space mission. He even broke a few records during his time in space, conducting more health science experiments and social experiments than any other Canadian astronaut. That's all our time for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.